breakfast with eggs, sausage, and Linux Mint. Hello, guys, and welcome back. Linux Mint Mate. I always come back to this. I've been using this off and on since 2008. More so on than off since I don't use Ubuntu anymore. There's something about the simple Mate desktop, which is a fork of the old GNOME 2 desktop that Ubuntu used to use. It's simple. It's fast. It's comfortable. I guess if I had to choose a word for the Mate desktop in Linux Mint, it's comfortable. Like a pair of worn shoes, your favorite jeans. You know what I mean. So let's take a quick 10-minute gander through this. The only customizations I do here is moving the panel from the bottom to the top. I install the weather shortcut or weather applet as you see here. This is probably the, the best weather application in all of Linux. Now I know some of you would say in the past, come on man, just look out the window about the weather. Yeah, I could, but I don't know. I just like to keep it simple. The weather applet and the Mate desktop in Linux Mint. Easy to move the panel, top, bottom, left, right, as you, see, as you see here under Properties. Again, this is designed for Windows users, very easy to use. OBS Studio to record all this, of course. Thunderbird Email. The best email client, in my opinion, for both Linux and Windows. This is what I use for the PayPal and Patreon accounts when I get your notifications for your donations. Thank you so much. Firefox Web Browser, the quintessential Browser for Linux, I guess. I use multiple browsers. Firefox is good. I also like uh, Chrome and Brave. I tend to like Web Browser Hop. Not sure why, although not as much anymore. The File Manager, again, very simple. Again, I don't use do a lot of customizations once I install this. Not into that anymore. I just uh, like to click and go. I just want this to work. Brave Browser. Super fast, one of the fastest browsers for both Linux and Windows. You should try this if you don't have this. Very good. All right, moving along, let's have some fun. Let's use the terminal to install uh, CMatrix. I'll show you here real quick. It's the display terminal from the movie The Matrix, as you'll see here in a moment. Okay, now, you want the blue pill or the red pill, Neo? I'll take the red wine. Thank you very much. Back to the desktop. Let's see. Let's go back to the main menu. And from here, eh, let's see. Let's take a look at the... Uh, well, you can jump back and forth between all applications and favorites. Again, very easy to use. The system monitor. Very lightweight, 1.8 gigs of RAM usage, running OBS Studio Recorder. Very responsive on a Dell Optiplex. Super responsive, actually. Snappy Windows. Again, responsive. VLC Media Player. I installed this. Let's take a look at this. Well, a sad day for Star Wars fans. Disney's Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel will be shutting down. Now, you guys might recall during the pandemic, uh, this 100-room resort themed like a luxury cruise ship set in space included screens designed to simulate space and an onboard experience where guests could be assigned roles and take part in storylines across their two-day stay and even included training in lightsaber dueling. Sounds a lot of fun, except for one little thing. The cost of this was $4,800 for a couple with no kids or $6,000 for a family of four. During Not exactly a brilliant pandemic. move by Disney to open up a new resort during the pandemic at almost $5,000 per room. Yeah, not stable. Back to the main menu here, the Mint menu. Moving along, let's take a look at something else here. The USB image writer. This is what I use to create bootable USB sticks when I need to. Some more software here. And let's see. Let's take a look at Ticker. This is the feed reader that I use to... Um, uh, when you see me doing the live uh, live podcast, you'll, you'll see uh, 
scrolling information across the screen, news articles. It's ticker T-I-C-K-R. I think this is both for Linux and Windows. Usually works uh, very well. Haven't seen too many problems with this, but I've been using this one uh, quite a few years now. Again, just a simple uh, feed reader, news feed reader for Linux. Uh, that's customizable. You can, you can plug in different RSS feeds, whatever you like, as long as they're available, of course. LibreOffice. Don't use LibreOffice that much, but hey, it's it's there if you need it. And let's see. Moving along, let's take a look at this. Audacious. One of my favorite, probably my favorite lightweight music player. Always works, simple to use. If you're looking for something, just something simple, nothing fancy, take a look at Audacious. I've been using this one for quite a few years now in multiple Linux-based systems. I usually install this uh, right after I do a full install of something. All right, let's uh, take a look at... Uh, let's see, let's take a look at Bleach Bit. This is what I use to clean up my system. Something similar to... Uh, I would say similar to CCleaner in Windows. Works very well. Delete the files, temporary files I don't need. And from here, we can go on to the um, VLC. I want to say something about VLC. The standard system package, non-Flatpak, did not work for me that well. So I had to install the Flatpak version of VLC. And it's actually, as you saw, very snappy. It's not a snap package, but maybe you guys are right. Maybe given a choice, maybe flat packs are better than snap packages. Seems like in Linux Mint, they tend to be they're, they tend to be more responsive, very little delay. Uh, yeah, may, maybe just blind luck. But if I had to, if I had a choice between snaps and flat packs, I would have to say go with the flat pack if you need to install. Now, of course, you still have a choice between the system default packaging and flat packs, as you see here for GIMP. But given a choice, I would stick with flat packs. Synaptic Package Manager is probably my favorite way to install software. Uh, if you know what you're looking for, um, this has been around, oh, at least since 2006. Uh, it's not really designed for immediate beginners to Linux. It's not difficult to learn. But once you get more experience with Linux, then... Um, yeah, take a look at the Synaptic Package Manager. Again, you can do some tweaks on the main menu. Again, this is not really something I mess with. Once I have it set the way I want with the panel at the top and specific shortcuts, I'm good to go. I don't want to do any more tweaking for fear of breaking something, which is probably why I love Chrome OS Flex that much in Chromebooks. There's no tweaking. You just click and go. Everything works. Startup apps, uh, you can tweak this to speed up your system somewhat. Um, yeah, like the uh, uh, Mint Welcome, uh, I'm looking at this here. Uh, Blue, Blue Man Applet, don't need that. Again, take a look at whatever you don't need and just, you know, re remove those to uh, slightly speed up your system. If you are definitely new to all of this, you, you should take a look at the Welcome screen. This will help you navigate through your system. Very easy instructions and documentations. One of the best, Linux Mint Mate. As I said before, goodbye Ubuntu. Hello Linux Mint as a Windows user. I gave up on Ubuntu, just not the same since the 2016 version of Ubuntu. But for now, it's Linux Mint Mate. Have fun.